to ensure alternative voices, options, choices, and a way out for girls, women, and marginalized communities. Those citizens whose destinies are not of their own making. Wherever there are issues, Pane Nyaya, Siti Tina, Askulumeni, Gulendabala. It is a Wednesday night and we are back with yet another episode of Issues Paninyaya where we continue to challenge the status quo by raising awareness in an effort to influence change. My name is Rumba Zaivenge and together with my co-host uh, Mr. Leander Candiero, the captain, are broadcasting to you live on Capitalk 100.4 FM as well as on Star FM. Sounding good all the time. We are also live on our Facebook page, uh, on uh, Capitalk page at Capitalk FM as well as on the Issues Paninyaya page at Issues Paninya and on the Star FM page. We invite you to be part of the conversation on our WhatsApp platform number. That's 0773-910095. We also invite you to participate through our telephone or phone in or into the studio on 0719-100-404. The issue on for discussion this evening is the youth and mental health. Captain Lee. Good evening, Rumbi. How are you? Always better. Always better when I'm speaking to you. Great, thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. You flatter me, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Rumbi, you just mentioned a very um, sensitive issue, but also a very important issue there, the youth and mental health. And looking forward to the discussion. Um, and um, tonight we'll delve into these issues that are affecting young people. But while we're still talking about young people, we're excited and also just to remind you that we have two more days. That's right, two more days. That means on the 7th of October, we close uh, nominations. That's for the Netherlands Embassy of Zimbabwe. 2022, 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, gender champions hunt. Now, this has been an exciting journey, and we've received a lot of entries that have come through, and we're excited to going into now the stage where we'll now start um, shortlisting. So if you know young people who are working to create safer spaces, that's for women and uh, children, please let us know and do that by nominating anyone who you feel is doing that to an extent where they can be a gender champion. All you need to do is nominate them via our website. That's www16 days. That's 16 daysco.zw Or you can send a text to 078-622-1299. That's 078-622-1299. Nominate, nominate, and nominate. To date, we have more than 2,000 nominations. In fact, there are 2,013 to be exact. Nominations close on the 7th of October. And B, we have some really serious issues that are affecting young people. But we are also urging people to nominate, nominate, and nominate. Indeed, Lee. Nominate, nominate, nominate. Please take advantage of this opportunity. And Lee, you know what? We do have some serious, serious issues. And we've got to ask certain questions. Why are young people committing suicide? Why are young people taking drugs? Why are young people falling through the cracks? Uh, We're joined on the line to help us answer some of these uh, questions and chart the right sort of direction for us to start finding solutions. We are joined by Afungisai Majandushi 
is a therapist with extensive experience in these issues and she is here to help us unpack some of the realities around the issues affecting our young people. Uh, Dr. Fungi, a welcome to Issues Paninga. Hi, Rumbi. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. We also have Rutendo Chiedza Mukoi uh, joining us over the phone. Chiedza is a young person who is studying psychology with a passion for mental health. Uh, good evening, Chiedza. Thanks so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. And in studio, we are joined by Carol Mashinga Edzetap from Maneyu. Uh, she's the founder of Mandipa Hope Re- Rehabilitation Center. Uh, good evening to you, Carol, and thanks so much for joining us. Uh, good evening, Rumbi, and thank you so much for having us here. Fantastic. But before we start, uh, here's what a young man who is uh, recovering from drug and alcohol misuse had to say. as young people uh, there's no support from our families our parents even blame us for, for everything so we're resulting in between drugs and alcohol because uh, we don't have a lot of ideas about ability don't have much time to, to hear us uh, I think what we really should just uh, give us peace and time to compare to our ability to also avail my um, resources to help us in Zimbabwe because uh, parents expect us to, to work magic uh, but we are not actually magicians we are not too happy we are not too happy we are not too happy we are too busy for us yeah. hmm So that's a young man who uh, says we are not magicians and we feel that our parents are too busy from us, uh, are too busy for us rather. Um, So I want to invite your reactions to to, to that and uh, perhaps uh, maybe let me start uh, in in the studio. Um, Chida, what are your thoughts or reactions to that uh, young man expressing himself in that clip? Very touching uh, story. I just listened to just now. And uh, it is very sad, actually. But we cannot really blame the parents. The parents are also in trouble. It, it's, it's, it's not easy out there for the parents as well. Uh, he's talking about unemployment. Every parent, when you send your child to school, you want what's best for them for the future. Unfortunately, the economy of our country um, has let us down. I'm not blaming anyone, but it's really not good for anybody, the parents and the children as well. Um, when our children go to school, they have high expectations because we promise them that if they go to school and they do well, they're going to have a good life, they're going to get good jobs. And when they do finish school and they come home and they can't work, we also as parents um, are disappointed. We are also frustrated. Um, He also mentions um, the funding that the parents are not giving them maybe the finances to be able to start businesses or other uh, things that they want to do. But the parents are also struggling. Um, our country, Zimbabwe, at the moment is really going through a bad shot financially for everybody. Everybody's struggling. The parents are struggling. The children are struggling as well. So I think it's a problem for everyone. We love our children. Um, to the young men out there, your parents love you. It's beyond them at the moment. They are crying out for help. Ah, Chichi, coming to you, you are on your way to becoming a psychologist. Uh, the re- your reflections on what this young man had to say? Um, definitely a touching story there from that young gentleman. Just um, before I say anything, I definitely want to commend him for going on this journey of um, reco- recovering from, from drug and alcohol abuse. And I, I think these are sentiments that we all share as young people, that they stress us and issues that we're dealing with, especially when it comes to frustrations with school and employment. And um, some of us are resorting to taking on substance abuse. It's unfortunate that these are the um, circumstances that we've been put under. But definitely, yes, these are issues that we are facing. And same cries that many of us are experiencing, that our parents do not hear us. And um, there isn't enough uh, funding for for the things that we want to do. Of course, um, like... uh, 
that, that we mentioned there, the issues with our country, yet these are frustrations, the expectations that we had when we went into school, and all these different facets of life that we've gone into. So it definitely um, resonates with many of us young people, this young gentleman's story. And uh, Dr. Funke, coming to you now, what are the realities that you're facing um, on your end um, in your work as a therapist? Okay, um, so sorry, first of all, I couldn't quite hear Chi in case um, <laughs> he might want to tell me later. But, okay, so working as a therapist, that's more like a private setting, but I'm also the head psychiatrist at the Annex, and that's a lot of where people are coming in with their um, drug addiction sort of issues or substance use disorders. And currently, um, and I've been at the Annex for close to 10 years now, so in the last two years, I can safely say most of the patients that we are admitting are mainly substance use disorders, be it alcohol um, and all other drugs. Um, when I say mainly, I'm talking 75% and above. So that's such a change from the 10 years that I have been there. Lika, you heard that 75% and above are all alcohol or drug related uh, issues uh, and admissions. Yeah. Um, really, the, the seriousness of this issue uh, for me actually comes from the fact that um, I'm 43 now. That means about 20 years ago, I was in the same position as these young people were. Mm. And we were told then, even when we were young, 15, 16, that we are the future. Now for us, the good thing about it is today is the future that they were talking about. And fortunately... For some of us, we have something that we're doing and we were not caught up in this web where uh, the city or the country is awash with drugs. It's awash with uh, so many varieties of alcohol, some very, very dangerous to, to our health or to our children's health. So I'm saying we pass through that. But the children who are growing up today, unfortunately, have internet, they have... Um, these drugs, they have alcohol at their disposal. So for me, what worries me, I will be speaking to a 20-year-old today and say, you are the future. But what I'm scared of is we might not have a generation that will carry our future. If this continues, 75% is a scary number. It's a scary number. And then the numbers that we're talking about of young people who are getting into drugs, alcohol, and some even taking their own lives is scary. I'm scared. And, and with that, I think, you know, we've got to look at the causes. You know, you say it's unfortunate, Inyaye Internet. Um, do you believe that the Internet is the reason? Um, you know, Chido, uh, you know, I want to ask, you know, what are the causes of drug and alcohol abuse from, from your experience? Is, is it the Internet of things? Is it too much information? What's happening? There so many reasons why um, young people go into uh, drugs and alcohol abuse. Um, we cannot say just one thing is causing this whole um, problems that we're facing now. Um, hey, it can be social matters. You know, the way they live, like the young man was talking about their parents, they feel laid down. Sometimes it is true. Parents sometimes do not, they're not able to communicate with their children. Um, not because they don't want, maybe because they don't know how to communicate. You must also understand that we caught up as parents in hustling. Um, it's difficult at the moment. Everybody wakes up and goes to work. There's no time to sit with our children and be able to talk about issues. And it's very frustrating for the young people because they feel ignored. Um, we also have um, the political, I'm uh, sorry, the economical issues that we're talking about, like lack of employment and all that. It's very frustrating because they had expectations, the young people. So definitely going to get frustrated. Um, we also have uh, peer pressure. Just friends are wanting to feel like they belong. You go to a club or you go to um, a party and everybody's drinking, everybody's smoking. Um, and you want to join in just so that you belong, you become part of that. You also have uh, curiosity. People are curious just for the sake of doing it. So anybody can be curious, whether you're rich, you're poor, you're Christian, you're not Christian. So everybody's in this whole web, so they're caught up because of curiosity. Uh, we also have poverty. This one is uh, something that I've 
really found and um, it's, it's, it's kind of like sad. You find that um, people that stay in small places, like small houses, um, big families staying maybe in a two-roomed house, they wake up in the morning and maybe the boys sleep in the lounge and the girls sleep in the, at the corner of the lounge and the parents are in the bedroom. In the morning, they have to wake up and the kids have to go out so that we can sweep, we can clean, and visitors can come and the house looks normal. So where do these other youths go to? They go to the place where they go and stand together. Uh, I think they're called my bridge. So when they go to the bridges, they, they then end up doing things that they didn't expect to do. Um, I think for now, that's what I can think of. But you cannot blame it on one thing. Mm. Just so many factors. Yeah. Mm. Thanks so much, Carol, for that. But you know, when you say that it's frustration, uh, isn't that like a, an easy way out of it in explaining it away? Because so many people are facing the same uh, challenges. Van Wagawanda, very under those same conditions. But uh, And the drugs themselves cost money, don't they? So one would then say, I think you are, you are impoverished, but you have money to buy drugs. And a lot of the time, some of them are quite expensive. Can you just, you know, try and harmonize that for, for, for our listeners? I think people take things differently. Okay, the way you would um, take a problem is different from the way another person would take a problem. And don't forget your problem might not be a problem to another person. So when you've got money, it doesn't mean you don't have a problem. People with money also have frustrations of their own. Mm -hmm. People without money also have their own frustrations. So to say, okay, you asking why we saying why frustration is coming in and um, making these guys, it's one of the reasons why people go into drugs. We did not say frustration alone. Frustration is one of the many reasons why young people are going into uh, drug and alcohol abuse. Mm. Yeah, and for frustration, like I'm saying, anybody can be frustrated, but it's not the only reason why. So, yeah, oh. it's not only frustration. Paninyaya, <laughs> yeah. Paninyaya. Um, and 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 Fungi, coming back to you now, you 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 have hands-on experience in terms of dealing with the people coming in and out uh, of the institution um, that you are based in. Uh, let's look at the statistics. Um, you know, the age range. Uh, is it more men or women who are coming in with some of these problems? And, you know, how prevalent is, is uh, are their issues? Because, you know, they range from, uh, is it all alcohol? Is it all drugs? And, and, and at what point uh, are you seeing a pattern uh, in terms of the people coming Coming in and out of the facility. Okay, um, so it used to be more men, and in fact, the way our facility was built is that um, it, we didn't have a big all women section. Um, but now, actually, we've um, fully expanded, which we were doing and did during COVID. So you find that the number of men being admitted for substance use disorders, although in absolute numbers, they are still more than women. The number of women and girls being admitted for substance use disorders is increasing. I think it's also awareness and the fact that um, more women globally are also indulging in substances to a high level. So the age range tends to be adolescent. Um, so it used to be around 18 to about sort of 25 to 30. But now you will find that it can be really sort of um, young boys I must call them boys when they are in their 17s or 16s. So we do get that age group. We try not to admit them just because we're an adult facility, but they do present, um, as well as the females. Um, so that's sort of about the age and in terms of um, the gender differences. Um, I can't, I think you had another question concerning the statistics, Rumbi. Yes, ar around, you know, the, the prevalence of, you know, is it mainly drugs? Is it alcohol? You know, the substances okay. of choice. So in terms of substances, there is this thing where some people are like, um, <laughs> substances tend to be quite <laughs> selfish, we say, and that you find that a person who is predisposed or indulges in a specific substance tends to favor one substance. So you find that someone can take sort of poly substance, but they like one thing specifically. So you find that with those who abuse alcohol, it is predominantly alcohol. Um, equally, maybe alcohol and cigarettes. And then equally, when you find... Um, patients or clients who indulge in maybe sort of crystal meth. So crystal meth being a stimulant means that you don't sleep, you don't eat, you go for days, kind of energize a bunny. So then they tend to then take another substance to come down from the high. So that may be something like cannabis or your um, diazepams, um, like a bronchia, something that calms them down. But their primary drug of choice might then be just the crystal meth. So most drug abusers can take 
you know, poly drugs, but when you actually speak to them, they'll tell you, and that's not like, and it's like crystal meets up, or don't go pocket a door, and don't go no house, but it won't be what the interest is. Just like those who like cannabis, like cannabis. Titi, uh, coming to you, um, okay, you want to become a psychologist. <laughs> Why psychology? You know, just I'm just reflecting on Suruta on a Dr. Fungi and all the things that they, 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 they get. I'm also looking at what Carol was talking about and the people who present at uh, the rehab facility, Kumandipa Hope. Why have you chosen this particular uh, field uh, going forward? Well, um, that's a very good question. And I, I believe no field is without its challenges. But I was drawn to psychology because of people and just how people interact on an individual level, on a group level, whatever it is, and just generally how people behave. The human behavior is very interesting to me. And it boils down even just to what was very interesting for me was the fact that in our African culture, there's still some stigma towards mental health, um, so deemed either munane, china, or just there isn't great animal demoni exactly you know evil spirits and there isn't a great understanding of what is really happening in people's minds and i think i wanted to have a hand in that you know in in, in creating awareness and understanding and bettering our society in in the mental health and also there's just too many accountants and engineers in my family so i decided well let me try psychology <laughs> I see, Gigi. <laughs> I see. Um, and uh, coming to some of the reasons, you know, and you, you also are a young person. Uh, I want us to also zero in on uh, a lot of the young people uh, and why uh, they are turning to uh, suicide or drug abuse or drug dependence. Um, and a lot of the time is because there's this belief that young people are not listened to. Do you believe that this is true? Uh, are young people listened to enough by people around them? Well, absolutely, I do agree. Um, young people aren't listened to, and listening, I think that's where most people get it uh, mistaken, is listening to actively hear what young people are say- saying, because there's lots of things that we're going through, and we're trying to express to the people we love. Those are the people in our close proximity, but they don't hear us. They're just listening there to hear, ah, but you're not really hearing what I'm saying. And it's not just uh, falling on our parents, it's our friends. There's a whole thing of um, individuality and self-indulgence. Not many people are hearing other people in their community and it's it's to our detriment. We're losing lives because we're not taking time to hear our young people. So I do believe that there, there is some, some need for hearing young people. Alike, do you want to come in there? Um, so, so Rumbi, um, I think... Um, all, all, all our guests here have, have spoken very well. And um, the, the first speaker was very correct in saying that uh, we cannot blame uh, or find the cause as just one thing. But I must hasten and say, um, the, the growth of the Internet has a huge role in some of the decision-making processes that young people are going through. Because we didn't have it at our disposal. We had limited information, very limited information. I will tell you that most of the things that young people are capable of doing right now, the inclusion of taking drugs, which drugs to take, um, unfortunately even suicide, they're learning it off the internet. Um, But why? Why are they doing this? Um, For most of these young people, Drugs, alcohol, sex, um, careless partying is an outlet for them. And unfortunately, these are uncontrolled outlets. So because we have uncontrolled outlets, first of all, they cannot handle Internet. It's also very prevalent that relationships between boy and girl are out of control. We even have a word for it now. You see a lot of people making fun of it on the internet, Ujolo, whatnot. But some young people are actually suffering from bad relationships and they cannot handle it. So they opt to these uh, substances, 
uh, alcohol because they think it's an outlet. So what would I suggest? I remember when we were doing work around uh, climate change, and we still do, there were two main words that I think we should look at, even in this case, and that's mitigation and adaptation. First of all, I would like to speak to the parents because I think in the, the young man spoke about parents. I'm calling upon parents that they have to adjust parenting skills. We cannot use the same parenting skills that we were using five years ago or ten years ago. The world has changed. The way children think has changed. The influences around them has changed. When we speak about mitigation, I'm thinking it is a fact that there's no employment. We cannot lie about that. So I'm thinking, Rumbi, as one of the solutions, just one of the solutions, our leadership should really consider opening up the possibilities. Our, what am I talking about? Art in itself in Zimbabwe is not respected to that extent. But I think it's high time that we should start opening up spaces that were not regarded as good employment. I'm also looking at online work. Some young people are involved in online work. They're getting paid for it. But it's not educated. We don't have enough education on it. We haven't even opened up those platforms for young people to be able to earn through the Internet, which they are abusing at the moment. So I'm thinking, for me, at the moment, those are the two things that we should be looking at. There's more that we can do. But parenting skills and also just just expanding where people or young people can go and find uh, some economic empowerment or financial em- uh, empowerment of some sort. And, and, and you know, and Liga, do, do you believe that, you know, a lot of these things that, you know, that will, what, what of, you know, the person who has all things considered? And I think I like what, what Carol said. She said, you know, sometimes someone will have money and they will have uh, the uh, traditional conveniences. And, you know, the issue is probably something else. Uh, yet they still turn to drugs and to alcohol or to whatever their vice might be. She, she was very correct in saying that uh, I remember there was this discussion, and I think Folato was handling that one, mm-hmm. where they were, they were mainly talking about depression. And calls actually came through, Rumi, and um, some people were saying, ah, the people on the other side of Samora, mm-hmm. they, they don't know what depression is. Uh, we on the other side of Samora in the ghetto, we know what depression is. We know what stress is. And that's a misconception that is there. So she was very correct in saying um, both ends or both poles do still go through the same frustrations or it might be different frustrations uh, actually. But I spoke about relationships, Rumbi. And I think at the moment we haven't, as, even as a nation, started looking at the impact of a bad relationship, either on a man or a woman. I think we're still joking about that issue. When somebody is rejected, it is not something to play around with. And how do you deal with it? Not so many people know how to deal with it. Not so many people know how to speak to someone who has been rejected. I mean, go anywhere. Whether it's at work, whether it's at church, whether it's at home. Rejection is not easy to deal with. So a lot of young people are getting into these relationships with expectations. Some of them even paint pictures and movies in their heads. They're going to get married. They're going to go and uh, go to the Bahamas and whatnot. Then they find out that their partner is cheating. Then they find out the partner is nowhere to be seen. Some are even, even going to the altar and then things break up. People do not know how to process that or handle that. So that's one of the things that some young people are failing to deal with, especially when we talk about those people who we might call have the haves versus the have-nots. Um, she spoke about frustration as well. School sometimes can be frustrating for, for young people. A lot of the curriculums have changed. Um, some, of, some, of, some of them just can't find it easy to handle. So these frustrations differ. But how do we deal with these frustrations is where we need to find the answers. Because if we don't, then we will remain in trouble. 
Absolutely. You can also be part of the conversation. Zero seven one nine one hundred four zero four. That is the number. You can also send us your messages on our WhatsApp platform zero seven seven three nine one zero zero nine five as we talk about the youth and mental health, the causes and how to best deal with some of these issues. We've got a message here from Emmanuel uh, in Chitungwiza. He says, Hi, I'm Emmanuel in Chitungwiza. Um, the major root cause is the economic challenges that our country is experiencing. You cannot expect a graduate selling etam and roasting maize on the road, though there are other issues that may trigger drug and alcohol abuse, lack of parent and child grooming and career guidance are a few examples. Um, and, and I want to, to, to come back to you, Carol, now uh, on that and maybe uh, find it out and ask, what are the causes of drug and alcohol abuse um, in the cases that you meet and, and interact with? How does it all work? Um, I would say 60% of the guys that come to the rehabilitation center have degrees or have just dropped out of school, but most of them have degrees. I think they are frustrated for sure, like you said. As I said, we have expectations. The young people have expectations. When they finish school, remember when we were growing up, our parents will always say, if you work hard, you're going to drive a nice car, you're going to stay in the right places. And then you find you finish school, and then you come back to Zimbabwe for those that had gone out, and you cannot find employment. Now you've got to sell airtime, you've got to sell fruits, you've got... It, it's it's very frustrating. So definitely, yes, um, our economy has let us down or let our children down. And um, it is sad because it is what it is. We as parents and families, we need to sit down and, um, and maybe together as a country, but I think a country is too big. We have to start at home. The parents, the families, the whole family. Because it will, if it affects you today, tomorrow your sister, your aunt. So I think if families can get together and see how they can help their own for now. Whilst people are trying to see how we can help each other as groups. Whether um, a group of people from Chitungwiza or Harare or Bulueo. But it's going to take time. Don't mm-hmm. forget the drug and alcohol issue or the mental health thing was very quiet in Zimbabwe. It's something that has just come up now. So we are caught unaway. It's like we're in a deep end mm-hmm. and we're trying to swim. And I think many organizations are trying to come together to try and see how we can help everybody. But it's overwhelming. I'm sure everybody involved, uh, Dr. Fungi and, and everybody else on board today, can actually agree to that. It's, it's, it's something that has caught us out of way. I'm sure even the government, they have no idea what to do right now. We need each other, yes. But whilst we're trying to get solution as a country, we need to start as a family immediately. Otherwise, the family itself is going to be really affected. And the fire is moving fast. It's, it's fast spreading. So yeah. And then I'm also interested in finding out, um, you know, the other uh, ethnicities, if you're at, at liberty to share. And I'm only asking because uh, I want to understand how many African people, how many Zimbabweans, how many black Zimbabweans are actually coming forward uh, and, and taking up these services, their rehab and so on. Because a lot of the time, they say uh, culturally, I think Chichi, you know, touched on that a little bit and, you know, and said that there's also that burden of cultural acceptance of mental health issues um i think zimbabweans are coming up um i think the majority out of uh, desperation because your the children are getting crazy they are losing it they're becoming violent they are stealing they are they are they are dying they are they're getting sick so when you caught with something like that you look for help whether the help helps or not they're just forced in and at the moment, the only way of help, I think, that I know is rehabilitation. So, yes, we do get a lot of Zimbabweans, 99% of the people that we get are from Zimbabwe. I'm not sure whether it's because of knowledge of mental health or because they're just desperate because of the situation they have in their house. Yeah. Okay, so that uh, speaks to uh, the issue of, uh, you know, the Africans also coming forward. We've got uh, Mighty in Toronto, who's tuned into the program, who also sends her contribution. And she says, hi, I think all family members are facing mental health struggles due to the economic crisis in the country. So parents are barely able to motivate themselves, much less having enough money to encourage the children and enough energy to encourage the children. We should just try to extend grace to each other because 
because everyone is struggling. Drugs and alcohol are just adding fuel to the fire. Mighty, thanks so much for coming in uh, uh, from Toronto. Chichi, I, I want I want to come to you um, uh, and maybe hear from you. What do you believe can be done differently by parents uh, in some of these situations? Because the aspect of parenting and the family uh, the family structure and the family foundation keep coming back to the fore. Right, absolutely. I, I think definitely our parents could tune in to us as, as their children, just really take time to, to see and be with us and be present with us and um, grant us compassion, grace and understanding. Um, create floors for open dialogue just we, so that we can converse openly without shame and, you know, just be with each other and understand, like Mighty um, uh, contributed there, we have to understand that we're all struggling here. But uh, just creating spaces for us to be open and honest with each other, I think that could go a long way, especially with us young people. And then also, you know, we need to also be very complete in this discussion. What can young people do differently? Because they're getting everything. I think we definitely, as young people, need to learn to be more self-assured, self-confident. We need to uh, pour into ourselves. It could be uh, words of affirmation. And, you know, just tune into ourselves and understand that everyone is struggling. But in order to, to persevere and, and go forward, we need to be able to to understand that we have to be there for ourselves. So just being self-confident, opening up to other people as well. We really could just reach out to, it could be whoever, a friend, um, a pastor, some a lecturer, just anyone, pour out. Because really, after pouring out, you do feel a little lighter and it, it, it leavens with the burden. So definitely reaching out to others, self-confidence, um, looking into so, so problem solving mechanisms and looking for the right coping mechanisms from busia doronene ma drugs just look for other better coping mechanisms i think that's just the start of how we can develop and um help ourselves now carol uh, the, okay you when you rehabilitate someone can someone ever be completely healed Someone comes, you know, alcohol, drug abuse. They come to you. They say, "That's it. I want help." Uh, you rehabilitate them. Can they ever be completely healed? And how long a time are we talking about being rehabilitated? Because it means I can't work, isn't it? I can't yeah. live at home. Uh, tell us how, how how the whole process works. Okay, so um, we usually rehabilitate for about six weeks plus. I think uh, most people, including Alex and other places, also do the same. Um, for us at Mandipa Hope, it depends on the progress. Sometimes six weeks is not enough uh, for the people to go back home because they're still not well and they still need to be monitored. And um, it's difficult on the parents to monitor someone who's got mental problems when they've never been taught and they're not experts in that field. So we help by keeping the people a bit longer than just the six weeks. And yes, people get healed. They do get better. There are some instances, maybe for us, I think maybe one out of every 50, where you think, okay, this has really been, what happens? They leave the person for too long, maybe three or uh, 10 years, somebody doing drugs and they're really like wasted. And then they try to come to rehab. Sometimes it's a bit too late, although they can be helped to some extent. Um, maybe another question will be, when they do get out, do they live a normal life and it's happy ever after? Yes, there are people that do that but not maybe everybody the statistics with regards to that i don't think i can say because like i'm saying mental health in zimbabwe has just been it's just come up now maybe other doctors that have been in the field for long like dr fungi maybe can answer that question better can people be healed and stay healed forever and live an normal life for a long time for me i can just say for now i've seen what we've done over the last maybe two years plus so i cannot tell what will happen in the next three four years yeah uh, d Dr. Fungi, are you still there? Yes, I am. Oh, fantastic. Um, please come in there in, in terms of interventions and uh, whether or not uh, one can be completely healed um, from drug abuse or substance abuse and misuse. Um, I think the thing is, first of all, when you call it an addiction or disorder, it being a 
for me a medical condition. So it's like saying something like hypertension. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can be stable, um, but to say healed would mean you never get a crisis again, and that's not something that um, I would say. There are possibilities of relapse within the course of your life, but the intensity of the relapse, what I'm trying to say basically is, we never know if it's a mistake and you have a bad bender one day or something like that, but there's a bad bender that redefines your walk with addiction forever. No. But what predetermines these things is if you go through another crisis, you lose a relative, you lose a parent, and you are unable to cope, you may then resort to the addiction again. Because some and a lot do take addiction because they are unable to cope, like Carol said earlier. And then equally, so it means that when they are treated, um, a good sort of facility looks not only at detoxing, which is the act of drying out a person from substances, um, the period in which they are clean, right? But looking at now understanding them, giving the, the, the necessary therapy um, so that you understand the underlying issues. So next time they're in a situation, they don't go back to drugs. Some people who take drugs, maybe they take drugs because um, you find they're socially awkward. They don't know how to walk to our Nuaskana or to be in a social setting. So maybe they take alcohol so that they can have fun and engage. So if you then deal with these issues during that time, how they are able to engage, learning, relearning social skills, um, learning fulfilling relationships, dealing with conflicts, all of those things during the process of treatment, they are then more likely to have you know, no relapses during their life. But if those issues aren't dealt with and you're just admitted and they're just dried out and they, then another crisis happens because life will always have crisis, then they might then resort to drugs or alcohol again. You know, um, um, Dr. Fungi, there's also another message here um, that, that I think you would be uh, well-suited uh, and, and very, uh, you know, you are the right person to answer this one. Um, this is a listener who says, I've just tuned in. There's need for mental health awareness. I'm someone who is currently undergoing therapy for depression and society still believes kujitisa, kuita stress or depression or anxiety. How do you go over this particular aspect? How can we go over this this hump uh, in terms of society and their perceptions when it comes to mental health? I mean, I'll definitely say in terms of um, psychiatry, um, whether in the private sector or, or at uh, the annex where I work, it's one of the most amazing things because unlike when you go and see a doctor and you're just seen by yourself, be it for BP or sugar or whatever, right? If you've ever gone to a therapist, they do engage your family. They do try and say who's important to you. Is it okay if I engage them so they have a better understanding of what you're going through? So it is such a holistic um, sort of discipline. We, we, we are willing always um, at any level, even if you talk about psychology, they have family therapy sessions if people are comfortable to have them. But in terms of that awareness, it is available um, because we are trying to break down the stigma. I think the issue is sometimes the patient themselves doesn't want people to know um, what's going on in their lives. But in terms of the practitioner, it's part and parcel of the teaching to engage um, and sort of facilitate an understanding to reduce stigma and sort of have better adherence. Um, Alike, th- there's a message here. Anzi, thank you for a positive discussion. I've learned a lot and will continue to. The problem is, can a person recover from these economy-inspired mental problems? Suppose the economy gets worse than it is now. Won't they relapse again or forever? Shouldn't we focus on the economy? Uh, why we're here, how we got here first? Fix the, the economy. Kwete Kudakuita try to fix people. What do you think? Um, Rundi, I think... Um they are correct in saying let's fix the economy. But we have also to be realistic and very honest. Fixing an economy is a long-term thing. But the lives of our young people might not be as long as, um, as, as what we need, right? So I'm looking at a 20-year-old 20, a, a 20 who has just left school or university or 21-year-old. We might then say, with all these interventions that we're seeing uh, from our leadership um, in terms of fixing the economy, sometimes you hear that it's a five-term program. Um, the other one even extends to 10 years, right? But I need my young man to be all right tomorrow, not next year, but tomorrow. 
It means either to stay away from the drugs or be rehabilitated. And so, I mean, they are very correct in saying one of the biggest problems is could be the economy. But we cannot fixate our um, issues on the economy. There are other issues that are happening in homes. Broken homes cause um, depression on young people. Relationships, like I said, cause depression on young people. Um, work for those who are actually going to work has been seen to cause depression. Because maybe my nature is kukwana, and so a lot of these triggers are all over. But having said that, Rumbi, I know we're about to conclude. First of all, I would like people to really take the issue of drugs and alcohol abuse very seriously. At the moment, I don't think we are. Uh, salute to the ladies that we have on the platform and to many other organizations and individuals who I know are doing a lot of work towards that. But as a nation, I don't think we have taken it seriously. When we were doing HIV and AIDS interventions, there was something called low risk perception, where someone feels like it won't happen to my child, it will happen to the child next door. Or it won't happen to me, it will happen to the person next door. But a lot of people are finding themselves in these situations where they are now taking drugs, they are abusing alcohol, or they are thinking of suicide. So I'm calling upon the nation to really take this issue seriously. Let's not take it for granted. Another thing that I'm going to say, Rumbi, is we must understand now that we have a lot of drugs coming into the country, some of them being manufactured here. It is now a business. So the fight against drugs has to be stronger from a lot of angles, government, uh, private sector, public sector, individuals, the church, media, it has to really need to come together because because drugs are washed now, we, un- we need to understand we are fighting against people who are making money out of it. The last thing that I would like to say is, information is not enough, Rumbi, that is out there. I will go back to the issue of HIV and, and, and AIDS. We knew through posters what um, probably the symptoms of someone who was HIV positive was. Do we know... The symptoms of uh, of my child, if he starts taking drugs, do we even know what some of these drugs look like? There's no posters, there's no information that will help a, ch- a parent decide. So how do we expect the parent to then make good decisions? So I'm calling upon our good friends who are here today with us and others who are in part of this fight to make sure that we have enough information that will make us make the right decisions. Yeah, thanks so much, Alike. And uh, uh, coming uh, to you, uh, Dr. Fungi, your parting shot and reflections as we wrap up uh, the discussion for this evening on the youth and mental health. Um, thank you. Um, I think what's important is that you can't ignore it. You can't ignore that there is definitely you know, a pandemic, um, especially amongst the youth. But, I mean, it's, it's really across all the ages. And when there's a pandemic of that sort, because people take drugs, we say initially maybe to experiment your high school years, like hey, somebody will try alcohol, these things happen. But to stick around and use drugs for longer is usually a sign that an individual is not coping in some aspects of their lives. So it's important to say when you see that happening to a loved one or a family member, you can't ignore that they do need help and they are in a crisis because it is not something they should, a person would normally do. And Chichi, coming to you, your closing remarks? Uh, thank you so much for having me. I, I definitely think we need to be more aggressive on shedding light on awareness on mental health and just give grace to the young people. We're also trying to figure it out, so give us grace um, as we journey through this life. And last but certainly not least, Carol, your closing remarks are from the studio. Um, I would say the addicts are people just like us, and they need love, and they need help. Avaskushitisa. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a sickness, it's a disease. And um, just like anybody else who get a headache and you run around. So when you see somebody who is addicted, please do love them and help them out. 
We never have enough time to get into all of these issues, but there definitely is a lot that can be done to meet the needs of all the youths and older people who are suffering from mental health issues as well as substance abuse. So please, if you see someone having a hard time, be a safe space, open up to them and talk to them. And as Nyadzisi, to seek help, please let's reach out and get all the help that we require. This has been Issues Paninyaya. We'll be back again with yet another stimulating episode next week. Thank you so much for listening. Good night. Issues Paninyaya.